Here's our March 9, 2021 edition of Spy Movie News with updates on Mission Impossible 7 and 8, No Time to Die, Ana de Armas, The Gray Man, Agent Game, Killers of the Flower Moon, and how to get paid watching Bond movies and more. Let's go. Hi, this is Dan Silvestri of SpyMovieNavigator.com with another very special edition of Cracking the Code of Spy Movies. Remember, all of the links to the articles that will be mentioned here are on our website under episode notes. Let's get cracking. Mission Impossible news. Mission Impossible 7 and 8 no longer shooting back to back. We've been hearing all along that Mission Impossible 7 and 8 were going to be filmed back to back and in some cases simultaneously, but no. According to this article on Deadline.com, Mission Impossible 8 will not shoot back-to-back with Mission Impossible 7. It appears that promotional duties for Tom Cruise's movie Top Gun Maverick, which releases July 2nd, will force Tom Cruise to push Mission Impossible 8 filming. There are no plans to alter the release date of Mission Impossible 8 because of this. Again, release dates as of now are Mission Impossible 7, November 2021, and Mission Impossible 8, November 2022. Kittridge is back. 25 years ago, Henry Cherney introduced us to Eugene Kittridge in the first Mission Impossible movie. In this article on cinemablend.com, we see a picture that Christopher McQuarrie posted on Instagram showing today's Kittridge. The picture is black and white, and it looks to us like it could be on a train car where he's sitting. Once again, not a lot has been said about what Kittridge will be doing in this movie, but it is great to see him back. The article reminds us that the IMF is without a secretary right now. Might Kittredge get that promotion? Tom Cruise gets foggy. <laughs> Another image that McQuarrie posted shows a silhouette of Tom Cruise's character running in a dark and foggy shot. You can check it out on cinemablend.com. The Gray Man. The Gray Man's updated cast list. We've talked about the cast of The Gray Man in previous editions of Spy Movie News. We now have some updated news. In this article on CinemaBlend.com, they tell us that Chris Evans plays a villain. Ryan Gosling plays the protagonist. Other previously announced performers in this star-studded cast include Ana de Armas, Jessica Henwick, Wagner Mora, Danush, and Julia Butters. They just announced the three newest performers, Billy Bob Thornton, Elfrey Woodard, and Tom's wife's pick for the next James Bond actor, Reggae Jean Page. This sounds like a fantastic cast with filming to begin later in the year. We can't wait. How Ana de Armas trains. Well, we've seen Ana de Armas in a few roles, like Knives Out and Knock Knock. In her upcoming role as Paloma in No Time to Die, she has to do a lot of fighting. Now in The Gray Man, she ratchets that up a notch. In this article on cinemablend.com, Dearmas talks about her training regimen to handle these action-type roles. She tells us, I have to prepare for this action film I'm doing with really intense physical work, training, and choreographies. I do it from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., and then I get a break. And then on weekends, I go to the shooting range, and I practice shooting with firing arms that I have to use in the film. And some knife training, too. I enjoy it very much. We're hoping to see the fruits of those efforts when No Time to Die and The Gray Man are released. James Bond. Speaking of No Time to Die, is No Time to Die to arrive in the UK theaters a week early? According to this article on MovieWeb.com, No Time to Die will be released in the United Kingdom September 30th. This is a week ahead of the previously announced October 8th release. This is an interesting development given that the official James Bond website, 007.com, still lists the release date as of October 8th. As much as we want the movie out as soon as it is safe, we at US-based spymovienavigator.com would like to see a global release date for No Time to Die. With the internet and all the buzz about this movie, those of us in the US and other non-UK parts of the world are unlikely to be able to keep away from all the buzz during the week between releases. It would be tough to see this movie after all this time we're waiting if we already know the ending, before we get to see it. We know it's probably a marketing and buzz-creating premiere release thing. But, wow, we would like one release date across the world. And in the supporting article on Collider.com, dated March 6, 2021, they talk about the same October release date 
and the new poster, which shows Craig as Bond facing left, holding a pistol in his right hand, clearly saying October 2021 for the release date. And they talk about the UK release of September 30th also in that article. We think we will wait until the official notification from Ian Productions and the studios. Digital posters with dates are easy to make at virtually no cost. We have seen similar posters for all the other release dates as well. Let's just hope the world is ready for people to return to the theaters and we can finally see No Time to Die and on a big screen. Anna de Armas' view as a Bond girl. Back to Anna. Sure, why not? Digital Spy released an article on March 6th called No Time to Die star Anna de Armas on being a Bond girl. In the article, they reference Anna de Armas having spoken to Vogue about joining the Bond team and what makes her character, Paloma, in No Time to Die different from previous Bond girls. Here's a snippet of what she says. Paloma is a really beautiful woman in her own way, and she's badass and very glamorous. We at SpyMovieNavigator.com think we will see more Bond women who are beautiful and also tough characters who can stand on their own. We saw that early on in License to Kill with Carrie Lowell's character, Pam Bouvier. We will see more as it should be. Hey, get paid to watch all the 007 movies. <laughs> in a contest at nerdbear.com, you can get paid to watch all 24 Eon Productions 007 movies. Nerdbear will pay one fan $1,000 and a $50 AMC gift card to watch all of them in 30 days. Also included is a $100 Amazon gift card to rent the movies on Amazon Prime. The winner will be required to watch all 24 movies and complete a simple worksheet over 30 days. Go to nerdbear.com for all the details. Of course, there's rules that apply and all the details you'll have to get from nerdbear.com. The closing date for the entry into the competition is April 16th, 2021 at 12 p.m., Eastern Standard Time. So, get cracking. <laughs> no Time to Die is still expected to smash the box office. Mike Reyes tells us in a CinemaBlend.com article that the five-time delayed No Time to Die should still be a hit. With so many people having been locked up during the pandemic, they are looking for nights out. This being the last Daniel Craig movie helps fuel the desire to see this movie. Plus, we're talking about James Bond here. Check the article out, cinemablend.com. We think he's right. Could the new James Bond be Henry Cavill? Okay. So this is just speculation on our part here at spymovienavigator.com. But in this article on movieweb.com, the rumor is that Henry Cavill won't be cast as Superman in the upcoming reboot. The article doesn't mention it, but could it be because Cavill will be locked up playing James Bond? I guess this is how rumors start. Anyway, we're just speculating. Killers of the Flower Moon gets its lead. Check out HollywoodReporter.com. It touts the signing of Jesse Plemons, the star in the upcoming Martin Scorsese movie, Killers of the Flower Moon. Jesse will play an FBI agent. Lily Gladstone, Leonardo DiCaprio, and Robert De Niro round out the leads. Killers of the Flower Moon is expected to shoot this May to late summer. Agent Game signs key roles. In this article on Deadline.com by Amanda Enduka, we find out that Dermot Mulroney, Catherine McNamara, Reese Coiro, Annie Alonza, and Mel Gibson have signed for the movie Agent Game. This spy thriller has Mulroney as a CIA officer who's involved with relocating foreign nationals. When Washington has a political change, he finds that the people he thought were his friends are now his enemies. Check it out. Deadline. Dot com. Boone picks up Gross for key role. Demetrius Gross is joining the Derek Presley directed movie Boone in the role of Agent Red. According to this article on Deadline.com, Boone is described as a strong, burnt out FBI agent on a personal mission to find and bring in an assassin that is causing turmoil to a few criminal organizations. His longtime friend gets killed. And he's out for revenge. Check it out. Deadline.com. Netflix picks up Operation Mincemeat. Wow. We've talked about Operation Mincemeat, the actual operation, in our podcast, Spy Movies and Real World Connections, and our podcast on the movie, The Silent Enemy. This was a real World War II espionage operation focused on a dead man. We don't want to give away any more here. 
Well, this article on Deadline.com discusses how Netflix has bought the North and Latin American rights for the already completed Colin Firth movie called Operation Mincemeat, which is based on this real-life operation. The movie counts Colin Firth, Matthew McFadden, Kelly McDonald, and Penelope Wilton among its cast members. This one will be high on our want-to-see list when it releases. Red Notice. Speaking of Netflix, Red Notice is scheduled to premiere on Netflix in 2021. Of course, looking at Red Notice, it's about an Interpol agent tracking an art thief. And in real life, a Red Notice is a request to law enforcement worldwide to locate and provisionally arrest a person pending extradition, surrender, or similar legal actions. So that's in real life what a Red Notice is. Additionally, as reported at cinemablend.com, Dwayne Johnson, who collaborated on and will star in Red Notice, has attached himself to another project, Teddy and the Guardians of the Night, which has been picked up by Netflix. While not a spy movie, it is about a teddy bear protecting a sleeping child from a monster. Johnson is growing his bond with Netflix. Industry news. New York City movie theaters start to reopen. Yeah. Brandon Roberts reports in this article on cinemablend.com that New York City theaters are able to open for the first time since the pandemic started. Capacity will be limited to 25% and up to 50 people. We see this as a huge step forward and gives us hope that maybe Black Widow will finally get released on its now targeted May 7th release date. Paramount Plus announces a 45-day release window on two movies. In an article on movieweb.com, it's reported that Mission Impossible 7 and A Quiet Place 2 will stream on Paramount Plus 45 days after the theatrical release. This is a nice hype move for promoting the new Paramount Plus service. It also gives us some clarity to the theater versus streaming release window debate on release schedules that have been mangled during the COVID-19 pandemic. We've previously reported on the tension between movie theaters and movie production companies about how long a window the theaters will have before a movie hits streaming services, if there is a delay at all. This past weekend, Cinemark, Harkins, and Cineplex theaters decided not to show Disney's Raya and the Last Dragon in its theaters because of this tension. They were supposed to, but because Disney announced a simultaneous release at the theater and on Disney+, Plus, these three chains decided to play hardball and cancel their showings. It's good to see Paramount announce this early like this so we know the ground rules. Not all releases will have this long of an in-theaters first window. Historically, the window was about 90 days, so these changes put more pressure on the theater chains. The industry's changing with all of the streaming competition and the desire to have theaters survive. This will be an interesting thing to watch. In memoriam, we're sad to announce that the spy world has lost two more of its cast and crew. William P. Cartledge, 1942 to 2021, as posted on 007.com, Bond associate, producer, and assistant director, William P. Cartledge, who worked on three James Bond movies directed by Lewis Gilbert, has died. He had worked on You Only Live Twice, The Spy Who Loved Me, and Moonraker. He had a 30-year directing and producing relationship with Gilbert. And Ronald Pickup. Variety reports that Ronald Pickup, who James Bond fans would know from his role as Elliot in the movie Never Say Never Again, has passed away. He had a 54-year career, and some of his other memorable roles include Norman Cousins in The Best Exotic Marigold Hotel and Neville Chamberlain in Darkest Hour. That wraps up our Spy Movie News for March 9th, 2021. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, at Spy Navigator, and Instagram, too. Subscribe right now to our Cracking the Code of Spy Movie show on your favorite podcast app. Thanks for listening. We appreciate it.